High School Band. Today's game will be starting in a minute, but first, here's a reminder that next Saturday, there'll be a doubleheader here at the stadium. Ah! Early Bill Max will be facing the Peterborough Patriots starting at 2 o'clock. So get your tickets today. Also, a reminder that two weeks from today will be Glove Day. Everyone attending will receive a souvenir miniature baseball glove courtesy of Gene Liebenguth of Liebenguth's Plumbing and Heating. So be sure to be here for that one, too. Hi, Willie. Yeah, all right. What kind of day, huh? Yeah. No, please, I don't want the little uh, plastic uh, things to burn. Take them away, please. Please, don't <laughs> Let's pick for something else. Uh, how about test? Uh, a little level on there? Yeah. Hello, hello. Rick Randell here. That's Rick good. Randell. That's good. That's yes, good. from station WMUD. How's that? That's good. I never know. Right. Okay. Here. Take these out. These were capped last time, and I didn't pick anything up until the seventh inning. Let's see. Here we are. Rick Randell. Please keep your hands off the sign. Yeah. Little boy. Wish I had the hammer for that kid. He does it all the time. <laughs> What do you want? Oh. Hello, fans. This is Rick Randell, bringing you the highlights, the lowlights, and the headlights of sports from the old broadcast booth. <laughs> but it's old, isn't it? <laughs> Here at the Sylvia W. Litzinger Memorial Stadium in downtown metropolitan Merleyville. Gonna be some game today, I can guarantee you that, sport fans. Traditional rivals are meeting on the playing field to carry out the sporting ritual, and may the more emergent team be victorious. <laughs> I'll be right here, Mike Side, to describe the action between the visiting Naugatuck laddies and our local boys. Let's hear it. Merleyville Max. Managing the Max, I have it right here. That crafty old war horse, Bertie Tidbits, number 98. Oh, sorry, the age of his mother. Back again at the helm, of course, the big red and blue machine. We had hoped to have him here for a few pregame words, but I guess he's busy mapping out his strategy. <laughs> On the mound for the Max will be Elwood P. Suggins with his famous trick pitch, the Suggins Curve. Those of you who are loyal followers of the early 09 will remember that Suggins was the first pitcher in the history of the game to point to a spot over the left field fence just before serving up a home run. We might see some surprises in today's game, too. The Max have an ace up their sleeve in relief pitcher. Let's see, I'll just take a... Run down here on the notes I've made. Oh, yes, on Macintosh Boy in the sixth. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> if we see him play today, we'll finally get to see what he's really worth. And if the $25 bonus really pays off. <laughs> We've got Peppery Bernie Fester down at second base. Let's not forget that good-looking rookie. What's his name? The kid. And let's not forget the real heart and guts of the team, the Merleyville Slugger. The babe, the Khalif of Baghdad, the pout, <laughs> the old Wamaroo. Yes, sir, if anybody hits a long ball, it's the babe. Hopefully, the great old-timer will carry our team to triumph, as he has for the past 37 summers. <laughs> the rest of the Max are really keyed up for the game, and we look for excitement on the field, certainly from the opening pitch to that final out. That was just a thing I did with my tongue. Incidentally, for what it's worth, and I think it's worth a great deal to know who's playing today, the Naugatuck Laddies. Hmm? A big hand, and let's give them some booze, too, because they're used to that. Are against our own hometown guys, the Merleyville Max. Bring the cheer up. Always bring it up when they want to come out. The Max have completed their warm-up now, and the game will be starting in a matter of minutes. Hey, Eddie, how much time we got for before the start of the game? Got three minutes? Plenty. I don't care whether it's your locker or not. It's my mirror. Beautiful. I don't look bad. I haven't changed since Tampa. See, I gotta remember now. I gotta give some different stuff this year. Make the crowd. Jazz them up a little bit. Hey! Stand it. 
not enough. Move it down, move it down. Shake! Too short, little lady. Shake! That's a print. <laughs> Folks, here comes his honor, the mayor. Executive Assistant George Brocklesby. So let's hear it. You'll be running from the other party. <laughs> oh, city officer. Now down in the dugout, Virginia Ham's got Elwood P. Suggins for an interview. Okay, Virginia, take it away. Thank you, Rick. Virginia Ham, we're down here in the dugout talking to the picture of the team, Mr. Elwood P. Suggins. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Mr. Suggins, if I might. You've got a very stimulating voice. Thank uh, you. It's almost, it borders on being deeply nasal. But uh, you seem to have picked it up and carried it enough to go locally for radio. Well, you're very kind to notice. Listen, you got any trick pitches up your sleeves there? Oh, I, I never talk about what trick pitches... Last year at this time, uh, before about 10 to 12 games, I was asked about trick pitches. I told the woman everything. She's a woman about your size and, and build. And uh, maybe you replaced her. I don't know. Her name was Jennifer Dendler. I'm a person. I'm not a woman. I'm just a person. But anyway... Well, I'm she... not into that scene, but at any rate, I'm going to tell you, she asked me my pitches for the day. Well, I got knocked out in the second inning. Everybody knows my pitches. They did. I mean... I'm telling off the team. We'll run in their locker. It's what they're doing today, I guess. In one word, describe yourself. One word? Oh, uh, roach-like. <laughs> I've always been stepped on all my life. I just know when I'm buried, I'm going to have a sign put over my tombstone. Step on me, everybody else did. I dream up your roach-like. At least you've got your pride, don't you? You can't go to 31 flavors and eat pride. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Elwood P. Suggins. It's been a very enlightening interview. And now, back to you, Rick. Welcome once again to Station WMUD, and this is Rick Randell. Incidentally, I'd like to take this opportunity, one of our great sponsors, who's been with us for at least, I don't know, seven, eight years, at least, ten, um, Mr. Brainerd W. Murchison of the Murchison Mortuaries. And, of course, he says... And his favorite expression, he's used it all the eight years that he's been a sponsor of part of this wonderful broadcast that I try to bring to all of you, regardless of age, color, and creed, is he always says, Mr. Brainerd W. Murchison, Murchison's Mortuary, 3625, Bonner Drive. He always says, if anybody's dying to bury you, I am. Peace, folks. Come on down here, right this way. I'm talking to the mayor. Yeah, we do have a problem here, Mr. Mayor, but uh, I think I'll have to work that out. Yes, and you take care of the woman in black. What's the story? What are, well, just, just, just relax. Sons, relax. Daughters. Take it easy, George. Uh, excuse me, sister. May I see your tickets? Hi there. Thank you. You're in the, uh, the wrong seat, sister. Your uh, seats are way over there. Yeah, you're in the mayor's seats. Yeah, come on. Please. Uh -huh. Yeah. That a boy. Sorry, Nice to see you, son. I know that you're an orphan. She'll take care of you, though, sister. Sister Agatha. Just good luck. What do you mean, come on? Take a look at what I got in my hand. The laddies are ahead in the first inning, five to nothing. However, the Merleyville Max are coming to bat. And there's a lot of power there, you know, in that lineup. Well, two, three people. <laughs> we can always count on. Need to tell them that. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a call here. <laughs> Turn it down. Kill it. Right, Harry. 
Yeah, you heard me. Now, now listen, take the 60 and, uh, got a kill? Lay it off, uh, lay it off against the max and move the 45 to the point spread on the laddies and, wait a minute, don't ever do it to me now, man. I'm having some heavy bread. Turn around there, you dummy. Well, I'm done with this time. Yeah, down for Y, you fool. Hello again, fans. Rick Randell here. The score is five to zip. That's five to zero. Five to nothing. Favor the ladies as we go to the bottom of the first. Hot dog. Five on the max will get you seven. Coney Island Frank's right here. Hey, bad person. Yeah, I wonder if you'd do me a favor, sweetheart. I wonder if you'd run over there to the hot dog stand to get me a couple of big Coney Island hot dogs. A lot of mustard, heavy on the mustard, and lots of onion and no buns. Kind of <laughs> cut down. <laughs> Here you go. Fifty bucks. Enough? <laughs> Should be. Keep the change. It's on the page. <laughs> you always do. Mr. Chidman, what is it? Huh? You got to put me in, sir. I can do it all. I can run, field, hit. Well, that's the reason I... I picked you up. <laughs> yeah. Down there in Florida, because you could run and field and hit. Yeah. So put me in. No, no, I'm not going to put you in right away, because I tell you the truth, I'm saving you. Boys, the old Merleville Max, I've got the old lucky pennant. Yes. My sister had this pennant. Before the team was even put together. I'm going to wave it now for good luck. <laughs> the Max are coming to bat here in the first inning. The laddies managed to squeak through the five runs against Elwood P. Suggins, but let me tell you, the top of that Max order is really something else. Look here. Georgie Tenler, mm, batting 116. <laughs> the rest of them are right in there. Major leaguers. You'll never see the majors. You pull yourself together. You'll never see a captain, a colonel, a corporal. Just hands on me. I'm a sportsman. I'm a mayor. Yeah, and you're crossing this place. If you don't win, it's going to be a housing project. <laughs> Get these guys moving and going. Come on, guys. You've had all winter long to sit on your stuff. Move it. Get that long ball. My brother did. in the old radio booth. Speaking to you from station WMUD. Uh, I want to give a score right now. It is the top of the sixth, and of course it's a break, 14 to nothing. In favor of the laddies over the Max. Macintosh boy. Macintosh boy! Whatever. I want you to warm up. Warm up! And uh, Elwood P. Suggins, of course, is on the mound. This guy is strong, folks. I mean strong. He's, he's a thrill to watch. Thank <laughs> you. 
because you're, you know, 20, 25, 26 years old, and he's, uh, I don't know what he is. Uh, he's, he's a classic. He'll never see the Hall of Fame. Now, you have a chance of seeing it today, believe me. 14-0? Well, 14-0, I know that. But you'd be surprised. We've got some heavy hitters. We've got three or four that can hit that ball over the fence. But you get this fire out right now. Good luck to you. Give him everything you got, and, you know, I'll, I'll see you in the shower. I'll win for you, Coach. Okay, I know you will. Incredible, incredible, folks. This ball game has completely turned around. Macintosh boy, the untried, untapped power of the mighty Mac machine is throwing smoke. In the top of the seventh, the Macs hold the laddies at their 14 and have also racked up an impressive eight runs of their own. And we can credit the great Macintosh boy. Come on, come on, boy. I love you. Ah, ah. Give that man some more pine. Hit him on the with some wet. Yeah, yeah. What? Smack, smack, smack. Give him the axe, 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 smack, Ready for some sauce? Love you, babe. Maud, how you doing? Careful, don't lean over too. <laughs> Why don't he put me in? I gotta get in. Look at these wrists, babe. Yeah, they're almost childlike. Huh? Had a baby cousin had a little wrist like that. I'm surprised you can catch your field or hit her into anything. I can do all that stuff. Well, just relax. That's your best bet. Stay kind of loose. Roll your eyes around. That's a great exercise for ball players. Roll around like that. That's your advice? That's it. That and one other thing. Get me a real tall bottle of beer. There's $50 there. I don't want to get it. I'm a heavy tipper. Hmm? About that? About that line. Sure, baby. Oh, those Max. What a comeback. I know we're not supposed to take sides here in the old broadcast booth, but let me... Let me put it this way. If I were a betting man, can you hear me, Claude? <laughs> if I were a betting man, I'd tell my bookie to forget anything I've ever said before in the entire history of my life about this game. Got that? One out, two on, and the score is 14 to 13. Exciting game. One out, and 
the score, 14 to 13. Bertie Tidbits is sitting over there in that far corner. I wonder what he's thinking of. Well, hey, Radio, he'll come up with a goodie. I can guarantee you that. Tidbits gives the bunt sign? What's that? Huh? How about this? Tidbits is giving the bunt sign with two strikes? <laughs> hey, genius, genius. <laughs> Pick up a popsicle and whatever. Bait? It'll be a bait. Bait? Partially deaf. I want you to... Now listen to me, pay attention. These are my instructions. I want you to hit the long ball. The man will reach up, point, as you always do. I love that. Point right, center or left. What are you going to do? Center? Good. Then just tip his ball with other fingers. <laughs> That's always a crowd piece. Way it on. Lord, oh, it does. That's it. I got on. Don't worry about it. Ah, this is for Pony League. Joke. Just a big toothpick for King Kong. Let's see. Roberto Stemolenso. Out of the country. <laughs> There's the one. You out there in the mound. Huh? Ah. Ah. <laughs> a little something for you, sweetheart. Oh, he's carrying just a little extra there. Fifty dollars. Give that to your mother. She can buy some more geraniums. Hey, what a day, man. Look at those fans. Hey, they don't believe it, are they all gas? <laughs> hey, crowd, standing ovation. They need it. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks so much. Yeah. from the, uh, the laddies there. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Wait just a moment, kid. I always do this. Christy Matheson, I, I did this to him once. Right over the beige house. Right over the chimney. Hey, you there. You're your head stuck in the little window. It's coming in your window. <laughs> His teeth were made at the VA. Okay. Here we go, boy. Give me anything you got. Give me anything you got. Let's see it. Steven! What? Strike? Didn't you think it was a little high? Right down the pipe. Right down the pipe? You read that in Sports Illustrated, you crumb dumb. Right down the pipe. You ever see this? Like to meet Smokey the Bear? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm, I'm telling you. Okay. Hey, right out there, right out there. Let's see it. Zero. Two. What? Hey, who is that kid in the mouth? Who is he? What's his name, quickly? Mike, Mike. I don't believe Mike, Mike. It's Mike something. Mike Capalooza? I knew his dad. He used to throw heavy cheeses in the air. That's him. Hey, babe. Remember, some heavy green's been laid on you. Get that out of the park. Got it, babe? All right. Okay, we're there, 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 anywhere out there. That's it, it's going out of the park. Let's see it. G-Rank 3. What? What? Strike 3? Oh, boy, are you kidding? You can make a confederate out of me, you guys. 
eyes in blue. It's a cliffhanger. Three on, two down, the bottom of the ninth. There's no tomorrow. It's do or die. Now or never. Kill or be killed. It's the good guys against the bad guys. It's us or them. What's Purdy gonna do? Do you feel tension? I do in my hands. Kid, is a kid, number around 22. Yes, sir. Don't move up to him that close. Sorry, Sal. Kid, I want to explain something to you. Uh huh. I mean, this is it. There's no tomorrow. I mean, it's it's do or die. Yes, now or never. You understand? Yes, sir. It's kill or be killed. It's the uh, good guys. Uh, it's the bad guys. So, kid, listen, listen to me, and listen good. The bases are loaded, as you can see. There's a man there on first, a man there on second, and a man there on where? Third, good for you. Hey, now, the essence of baseball, you see, uh, the very, the very core of it, the very, the very heart. Like every, uh, a manager. Is to advance the lead runner. That makes sense, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Remember in spring training? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Now, what I want you to a bat just to be taking a bat and walk up there and hit it. I want you to do more than that. This is a sacrifice. I'm not a sacrifice to fly. Understand? Uh-huh. What's a sacrifice on your part? But it's going to really please the crowd and it's going to do an awful lot for me. We want to win. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is what I want you to do. I want to pick up your bat like you normally do. Uh-huh. Put on your protective thing like you normally do. Uh-huh. Only tilt it. Mm. All the way back to where it almost falls off. So come up back. Yeah, yeah, sir. And I, I want you to get hit right here, right between the eyes. You'll drop for a moment, but then you're going to have to walk on down or stagger to first. Make sense? Yes, sir. You're going to be a hero for this. You'll walk for the rest of your life, but you'll be a hero. Okay? Because mm -hmm. he throws hard, harder than anybody. <laughs> Go get him. You're 22. <laughs> Folks, here comes the kid with his instructions from the great Purdy Tidbits. What do you think, fans? What's going to happen? And the senior is just out of pandemonium. The three on, one run behind. The unknown, untried kid has melted it out of the park. Ah, ah, ah. Are you as excited as I am? Come on, come on, come on. A magnificent back machine. Wins this Quaker. 17 to 14. You dummy. That'll be a hundred dollar fine. Just about wraps it up, sport fans. I hope you've enjoyed this game as much as I have. This is, of course, your old friend Rick Randell saying bye for now. And remember, if you want to play the game, play it. <laughs> Bad news. Listen, you tell your boss. <laughs> you know him as well as I do. <laughs> tell him I'll see him uh, kickoff time. Uh, football. Okay, I'm good for it then. Okay, I've got to sell about 2,000 leads a little less. Take this, it's on me. You've got tiny hands. Huh. No offense. <laughs>